I'm your host, Megan Leaders, the Chief Marketing Officer of Silicon Labs. And here with me today is Hardy Schmidbauer. He's the Senior Vice President of Kodalski IoT. Welcome, Hardy. It is great to have you with us. Great. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Well, let's get right into it. So for those people that don't know who Kodalski IoT is, can you talk to me about the work you're doing in IoT applications? Sure. So I, I joke that uh, the Kodelsky Group is is one of the largest companies that nobody's ever heard of. Uh, we're close to a, a billion dollars in, in revenue, and we have uh, four main divisions uh, within the company. We have our digital television business unit, uh, which uh, secures uh, and operates some of the largest TV networks globally. Uh, we have our public access division, which I'm sure you've interacted with at, at some point, uh, but we provide public access solutions for large parking facilities, uh, for stadiums um, and concert venues, um, as well as, as ski resorts. Um, so if you're a skier or you've gone to uh, uh, a game, you've probably gone through uh, Kodelsky technology. Uh, we have our cybersecurity division, uh, which provides uh, managed security services for some uh, large enterprise and other government entities. Um, and then within the IoT division, we have three main product lines. We have our IoT services, uh, which provides architecture, design, and assessment uh, services for IoT devices and IoT solutions. We have our, our Keystream system, uh, which is a solution for securely connecting, managing, and, and updating your IoT devices. Um, and then when our last product line is our IoT solutions, where we are developing end-to-end -end IoT solutions. And that's where we have integrated in the uh, Silicon Labs device into that uh, solution. Perfect. So needless to say, you are the eyes in the sky. You are everywhere from the sporting events to uh, where we drive and park uh, and everywhere in between. It's, it's quite extensive. Yes, we have a, a quite uh, diverse, I think, set of, uh, of solutions and business units within Kodelsky, uh, but there's always a, a strong uh, importance and reliance on security uh, within those solutions. And we incorporate that as well um, into our IoT solutions. Well, perfect. Let, let's touch on that for just a minute. You know, what's your, when you think about IoT security, how do you prioritize on securing your solutions? It's such a broad topic and there's so much out there. How, how do you prioritize that? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, security within the IoT space, I think if, if you ask, uh, you know, 10 different people, what is security within IoT? I'm pretty sure you, you get um, 10 different answers. Um, but I think, you know, within the IoT sector, there's been a real kind of priority and importance set on, on just making the solution work, trying to make it scale um, up in volumes and making sure there's a return on investment. I think there's really been very little focus so far on IoT security, but I think as, as volumes within IoT ramp up over the next couple of years, I think you're going to see a, a big shift and a, a lot more priority be placed um, on IoT security, you know, as, as volumes go up. Um, it becomes more attractive uh, potentially to a, a hacker uh, to compromise those solutions and, and try to monetize those in some way. Absolutely. I, I think you're 100% right. Security will play uh, an even larger role. And, and I want to go back to something you had said earlier about just the extensiveness of your portfolio in terms of the different use applications. And when we talk about security, putting on a different hat and thinking about security in the automobile industry where cars are stolen out of parking lots all the time. Um, and you have developed a wireless asset tracking device to help prevent that loss. Um, what, tell me about that and what other industries do you think can really advance from having that type of tracking device associated to their portfolio? Yeah, thank you. That's a, that's a great question. And that's, that's why we really focused our, our recover solution you know, within the asset tracking space. I think if you look at different IoT verticals, you know, the asset tracking um, segment is, it's one of the, the highest volume, um, and I think one of the, the most exciting um, over the next couple of years uh, from an IoT vertical uh, perspective. Um, if you look at most of the solutions which are in uh, volume today uh, within that sector, most of them are, are what we call fleet devices, where they are wired in uh, in some fashion uh, to the, the vehicle battery or, or the car battery. Um, but that becomes very easy to identify from a theft uh, perspective, they're typically wired in in two different locations. So if you know what you're looking for, they're very easy to identify um, and, and remove. And then, you know, being able to have to do that wired in installation also, you know, really increases the cost and I think can prevent 
um, some adoption of the solution because of that additional cost uh, and labor of having to wire in. So we really wanted to focus in our solution on something that was battery operated and wireless, but still giving that, that same user experience um, as, a, as a wired in uh, type of device. So you know, having a solution which could still transmit very frequently, um, but be very low power in order to achieve still the, the multi-year battery lifetime was really critical for the success um, of the solution. And that's why we uh, selected the Silicon Labs part, which we've integrated into that design. It's really because of the low power aspects um, of that design and that solution, which we view as, as critical, I think, for moving to uh, a lot more adoption in the asset tracking space um, over the next couple of years and be able to address uh, more use cases. Absolutely, and we see it left and right, right? Where, where things, the, the internet of things, but these things are getting tracked at such a rapid pace, things that we never would have imagined. And um, your, your use case is, is proof and point of that from applications that weren't ever even imagined years ago of how we would be preventing theft um, or providing that extra layer of security into our, our businesses that we, we drive past every day or we use um, in another way. So when you, when you were talking about this asset tracking, what were some of the design considerations, right? It's so complex and it can be so broad. What were some of the design considerations that your team took into account when developing it? Yeah, so, so we're targeting uh, kind of a, a, a two-in-one uh, type of solution. So we're, we're providing uh, really the, the lot management um, solution for the, the dealers um, and then a theft recovery solution uh, for, for consumers. Um, so, you know, the low power, I think, is what we already mentioned, it was one of the, the most important um, aspects um, of that. But I think also incorporating, you know, numerous different wireless technologies so that we can communicate, you know, over, you know, large areas, um, but also really get, you know, precise uh, location uh, in indoors and in other areas where uh, you're more obstructed from cellular or from GPS. Um, so we've really tried to incorporate, you know, cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth into that design where we can communicate frequently with those different uh, technologies, but still be able to maintain a, a long battery lifetime. That's right. That's right. Uh, it makes complete sense. And, and just knowing, right, all of these components have to fit together um, for the, really the most extensive use case possible and uh, low cost, low power, and uh, the the... The, the wireless connectivity is critical. Um, so wearing that hat of innovation, and when you think a couple of years out, what are, what are some of the most exciting developments we can expect to see in IoT in general over the next few years? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's been a, a lot of talk about IoT for a number of years, but I think, you know, things always take longer than, than people expect. But I, I really think we're just on the cusp of IoT volumes, you know, really ramping up over the next couple of years. And I think, the, the COVID and the pandemic, uh, I think, has really accelerated, you know, digital transformation and adoption in a number of IoT verticals, which maybe would have happened a, a little bit slower, um, or adoption would have been slower if we weren't um, in the pandemic uh, situation. Um, I think um, also if you look at um, the cell phone, I think will continue to play a, a very important role uh, within IoT over the next couple of years. Uh, so we're working on some exciting designs where we're using the cell phone as the, the key for automotive and for smart buildings. So that'll really be your, your key to get into um, access uh, different vehicles or different locations. Uh, so there's a, a strong uh, security component to that of how you can, can do that securely, uh, do access control, uh, assign rights, you know, all from the, the cell phone and, and make sure that that, that is secure. Um, you know, coming from a, a wireless background, I'm also quite interested and excited about what's happening in the satellite space. Uh, there's a ton of investment into that space. There are a lot of startups. Um, so I'm really curious to see how that, you know, transforms communications and IoT solutions over the next couple of years um, as that space uh, evolves as well. Well, I couldn't agree with you more in terms of the uh, accelerant that came upon us with this pandemic. It, we are seeing it left and right. Um, I think many, many opportunities exist for all of us as we look forward. And, uh, you know, Hardy, it is great to have you as a customer and a, a very good partner of Silicon Labs. I very much appreciate the conversation today and joining for an episode 
Uh, please be sure to check out our story and the story of Ms. Kadelsky um, at scilabs.com. Thanks so much for joining today.